Originating from both industrial effluents and urban runoff, heavy metals are some of the most prevalent waterborne pollutants and can have significant adverse effects on many different forms of life as they accumulate in ecosystems. Increases in rainfall and urban flooding compound this problem. Current systems for remediation of polluted water operate on an industrial scale, but are inefficient, produce large volumes of toxic waste, and require huge amounts of capital to operate. In fact, these processes are so intensive that they account for 3-7% to of global greenhouse gas emissions. With Waterbound, we aim to build a new, decentralised system for the bioremediation of urban floodwater, with the potential to be applied in cities across the world. We've developed a reef system that uses the bacteria Pseudomonas fluorescens in a chitosan-based composite to remove heavy metals from urban floodwater. The use of robotic fabrication allows us to develop bespoke structures specific to each site. Through the use of computational tools, we can analyse a site and develop a topology-optimised structure that bioremediates efficiently. Using chitosan recycled from the fishing industry and L-dopa produced by our bacteria, our base composition, called ChitoDX, is a structural biocomposite that holds its shape and does not disintegrate when submerged in water. We then mix this composition with sodium alginate to create a material gradient and optimize our design for particular purposes. P. fluorescens is a bacteria commonly found in waterways and plant root systems. This bacteria has been shown to be highly effective at removing heavy metals, such as nickel, from water. It is also able to produce L-dopa, a key molecule that hardens our material and makes it more structurally stable. We have conducted tests to ensure that our bacteria will survive in our developed material, that the bacteria will produce L-dopa, and that our biomaterial can remediate contaminated water. Since the bacteria is a key element to our bioremediation strategy, we needed it to not only survive, but thrive within this material. Our first tests edited the pH of our composite to ensure that our base material is as close to neutral as possible without changing the material's properties. As you can see, bringing the material to a fully neutral pH precipitates the chitosan out of the solution and gives the chitodx a crumbly texture. Following a titration test, we found that bringing the pH to 6 is the closest we can get to neutral while still retaining the properties of a pH 3 chitodx. After a series of growth tests, we found that our bacteria cannot survive in a purely chitosan-based material because of chitosan's antimicrobial properties. We then conducted a series of tests to explore how chitodx could be hybridized with sodium alginate to allow the growth of the bacteria. We found that using a gradient from 100 to 20% chitodx allows us to selectively vary the properties of our material across its volume. Through our investigations, we found that bacteria grew best in regions with at least 20% sodium alginate. L-dopa production tests allow us to see whether the bacteria could produce the L-dopa necessary to harden our material. L-dopa is expensive, and being able to produce it bacterially would make a large-scale installation more feasible. We are looking for a concentration of 3 grams per liter, which would give us the right percentage of L-dopa per liter of material. Our best results give us a concentration of about one-tenth of what we need to efficiently use the bacteria to produce L-dopa. Our results indicate that further optimization of this process might be needed. In order to evaluate the bioremediation efficiency of different material samples, a bespoke water tank setup allowed us to simulate the horizontal and vertical water movements of a flood. Our material sample was placed within the tank and a nickel solution was pumped in. Water samples are collected over a period of two hours to determine residual nickel concentration. Results revealed that the material to water ratio is significant in ensuring effective heavy metal absorption in the water tank, too little material was used to remediate the amount of polluted water, and it was therefore ineffective. We then set up a second experiment with a higher material-to-water ratio to obtain clearer results. We tested three different material samples. Sample A with our base composite, sample B with added sodium alginate, and sample C included pea fluorescence. After a two-hour bioremediation period, Spectrophotometry results indicated that sample C is the most effective in removing nickel, followed by sample B and then A. However, as the samples were observed to change the color of the water, a different testing method should be developed in the future to obtain more valid results. Inspired by natural worm reefs and rock pools, our synthetic bioremediating reef features geometries with folds and channels for increased surface area, improving the bioremediation efficiency of our system. 
Using Autodesk CFD, we tested several channel configurations to understand the movement of water through different geometries. Analysis results show that horizontally curved channels are most suitable due to their overall performance in slowing down water movement and minimizing wear and tear within the channels. Through observing the shrinking and swelling of our composite material, we have computationally simulated the behavior of our composite and its changing forms over time. The front view of the simulations clearly indicates how the swollen channels might affect the flow of water. In order to provide structural integrity to the synthetic reefs against water forces, an algorithm inspired by topology optimization was used to distribute load through the branching columns. A boundary is determined, followed by force and support points. Graph bundling is used to obtain the base geometry. The top part of the reef is selectively morphed, followed by the addition of channels to increase surface area to volume ratio. A portion of the reef is simplified to create a robotically extrudable geometry for the fabrication of a one-to-one -one scale prototype. This simplified geometry allows the development of a single-line toolpath in Rhino Grasshopper. The geometry is fabricated in three parts due to the limitations of the robot movement range. To overcome the limitations of the typical liquid deposition modelling approach, we developed a suspension printing method that would allow us to begin making synthetic reefs. We designed a custom end effector with an elongated nozzle to extrude our Kaito DX binder into a bed of silica. To ensure good layer-to-layer -layer adhesion and to eliminate the need for an excessively long nozzle, we printed each geometry in small sets or chunks of 12 layers. By stacking these chunks sequentially, we were able to reach print heights that would otherwise be impossible. After printing, we left the prototype to dry in place for seven days. Once partially dry, we excavated the print and left it for a further seven days until fully dry. This timeline shows the life cycle of our project. Externally cultured bacteria is added to our material along with the L-DOPA it has produced and is then robotically extruded into boxes of silica. After installing the fabricated geometries, the bacteria is able to start bioremediating flood water from within the material. Over time, the bacteria will help other organisms take root on our system, adding to the bioremediation efficiency of our installation. For our first test site, we chose the Sarno River, the most polluted river in Europe. The presence of canning and tanning industries around the river basin has contributed to a significant increase in heavy metals flowing downriver towards the city of Scafati and out into the Tyrrhenian Sea. Our site focuses on the urban center of Scafati. By connecting the main plaza and existing river maintenance systems, we hope to allow people to engage with our intervention. The presence of aware and overflow channels allows us to play with varying water speeds and explore different zones of bioremediation. By simulating different water velocities of the Sarno River across the site, we were able to observe possible river flooding scenarios. The area in front of the overflow weirs shows low velocity that is suitable as the main bioremediation zone. Upon identifying the main areas for the intervention, the footprint of the design proposal responds to the existing urban features on site. A synthetic bioremediating reef within the river morphs into a pavilion on ground level in a single sweep. A boundary is determined for the graph bundling workflow. The force points are positioned based on the direction of river flow and pavilion entrance, a central spine providing additional support for circulation on the reef, as well as secondary force points. The support points are positioned based on even column distribution for the reef and along the edges of the ground level pavilion. Once the points are determined, force points are connected to the support points and the graph bundling algorithm is applied. This generates branching columns for load distribution and the reef-based geometry is obtained. Organic folds are generated at the top of the reef through selective morphing. The algorithm is applied to form an outwards gradient from the central spine. This addresses the main direction of water flow as well as provide a clear pathway for users on the reef. Channels are then added to the morphed regions. Existing walkways around the reef enriches the user experience. As the form sweeps upwards into a pavilion, the same workflow was applied to adopt a unified design language. Folds and channels are placed towards ground level to bioremediate floodwaters. Strategic column placement opens up the central space to create an immersive user experience. 
benches in the same design language are added for seating, followed by portions of reef on the ground. Houdini simulations allow us to understand how the design proposal might impact the velocity of water flow. A material gradient is then applied to the reef, ranging from structural to water absorbent. These final visualizations encapsulate the cross-disciplinary research conducted and the vision for water bound.